right. Welcome back to Goals Don't Have Feelings with Dr. Stacia Alexander. I have the privilege of hosting a show that focuses on the emotionality of success when so few people actually talk about that. Mm. I highlight what it takes to set goals, develop a plan, and sustain those goals, how that works on you emotionally. So I have the privilege of doing that, and I'm hosting a special edition this week of conversations that are basically centered around the coronavirus. And my first guest for this series is my old classmate. He goes by Rob G, the general now. I know him by Robert Gamble. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. See, see, you ain't telling the truth to your people. You ain't telling the truth. <laughs> Stacy was my girlfriend. She oh, was my girlfriend. You didn't start out with that. Stacey you didn't was, start out with that. We went to homecoming together my sophomore year. I took her to McDonald's, <laughs> and we went to homecoming. And then Stacy quit me at Christmas because I ain't get her no gift. So there no we go. Let's put it way. on. Loud. No way. That is too let's, funny. Let's own it. Let's own it. Why would you give your girlfriend a gift on Christmas time? I was a bad guy. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, you called me on the phone right before me and my family was going to Wyatt's and you said, uh, uh, what'd you say? <laughs> you called me and said, you were awfully quiet on the phone. I was like, you know, what's going on? What's the matter? What you, what's going on? You, you, you really ain't been saying much. You're like, I think you know what I want to say. And hug fun. No, no, you have an excellent memory. Like that is totally not how I remember all of that happening. But because okay. it didn't because it didn't hit you in the gut. <laughs> I bet you bought every girlfriend thereafter a Christmas present, didn't you? Yeah. You know, and then seeing you, you know, your next boyfriend, I'm on the bus and he got a Camaro, you know, it just wasn't a good look. <laughs> Let me oh, I can't remember the dude's name, but you know, see, you you dated some dude that had a car after the fact. But it's all oh, it's all good. <laughs> That's thirty something years ago, and now, now, of course, I'll be racking my brain trying to figure out who drove a Camaro. What back in nineteen eighty six, eighty seven? What was it? Eighty five? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah nineteen eighty five. Yeah. Okay, well, I have yeah. a good idea. Then. I have a good idea. <laughs> and it's fun. I'm going to pull that picture because my daughter has. Not heads, but she found the picture the other day of my homecoming uh, when we went. Oh, really? She did? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I got it, too. I got it, too. I got it, I got, I got it too. No, none of this was on there. But yeah, yeah, I got it. Well, I mean, none, look, all of this wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, make up those wonders. But I'm glad you're joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. Reconnect. Facebook yeah. is wonderful. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Uh -huh. This cool. Uh -huh. I mean, because I, I don't really, at the... I didn't see you at all at the high school for until or college or many other years until until Facebook. So, you know, there's a lot of people from high school I didn't reconnect with at all. Because once I left high school, you went off to the military, right? Well, I went to Hampton first. I went to Hampton. Uh -huh. uh, I went to Hampton first. And then I did one semester at PV before okay. I went to before I went to uh, to the Navy for four years. Okay. But once I left and graduated now, nah, I haven't I haven't been back to Dallas since. I mean, other than see my parents, but now nah, I never lived in Dallas again. Are your parents still in the same neighborhood? Same house, same phone number. Ain't nothing changed. <laughs> <laughs> See, I left the neighborhood. Of course, I stayed in the Metroplex. Right. Um, and then now I still have a lot of family over there. But amazingly, I don't see as many of our classmates because everybody's so spread out around Dallas. So, right, right, right. I mean, Facebook really was one of those connecting pieces for me to actually get in touch with people that I hadn't talked to in years. So it's been great. Yeah, that's probably been cool. That part's been cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even for you, it's been great because of the praise and worship set that you're doing every morning. That's yeah. what I yeah, following you every morning. <laughs> How did you start that up? Um, you know, I've been on the morning show in Houston down here on ninety seven nine the box since two thousand four. And okay. um recently uh, they switched to a new morning show in January, but I've been used to getting up for the better part of 15, 16 years and, okay. and doing the mix in the morning. And then, uh, what was it? About 10 years ago, 2000, no, about 2007, I used to do the uh, gospel mix for Yolanda, Yolanda Adams, the Witness Fitness oh, Mix yeah. on, her on her syndicated show. Okay. So, um, so I did that for her and then just not having to necessarily get up, um, uh, it just felt weird. It felt mm -hmm. weird. So I needed something to be accountable to. So uh so to get up and do it in the morning. And then everybody and, and, and no knocks. Everybody, all the DJs right now are taking center stage and everybody's, you know, 
doing a mix night and day. You can turn on Instagram, take Facebook, you won't find somebody DJing something. Right. But um, the whole I saw was I didn't see really anybody doing any inspirational thing, at least not consistently. Right. So um, I, I don't know, God kind of spoke to me. It was like, all right, pick a time. We're going to do this every day. Seven, eight. Look at you with the logo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dang, hold up, hold up, hold up. And I put that together. I put that together on a little app called uh, uh, Over. I just put that. I, I put that together. I was playing around. Put that together. And, okay. and And so it holds me accountable because there's a time on there. It just can't be all willy nilly with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so yeah, it started as that. And, and I think just you know dealing with. Um, the environment and the season that we're in with coronavirus and you know uh, COVID nineteen and a lot of people are hearing a lot of bad news on the regular. We're getting inundated right. with right. Uh, bad news. The minute you turn on the TV, it's, you know, talking about uh, the number of cases, the number of deaths, uh, you know, yeah. where where we at on the curve, like it's going to get mm-hmm. worse and this and another. And so uh, a lot of people are dealing with um, strong uh, anxiety. Uh, strong feelings of anxiety and fear. My wife being one, um, and I think this is going to give some people PTSD. Just hearing the word coronavirus right. is right. going is going right. to trigger all kinds right. of different fears. So, um, my pastor said something uh, this past week. He said, "You know, we need to spiritually sanitize ourselves." So uh, that's kind of that. I, I mean, I was doing the mix before that, but. That phrase, I told him, I'm taking it. I'm running with that spirit to sanitize because. Well, you know, so that was a Monday. Um, let me back up. Sunday over into Monday was the first night that I slept all night mm-hmm. because you know, we had some family stuff going on last week. So Sunday night was the first night I slept all night. And when I woke up and it was almost eight o'clock and I was like, oh, I. Miss the mix, you know, like that was the first thought. You know, like, let me get on, you know, and I hopped on, and you were talking about, um, like you guys, Tammy, your sister, I love her, and I follow yeah. her. I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I'd have paid attention and shop, but uh, <laughs> she was talking, you know, she helped you with the, the, I guess, propelling the audience, like, we're gonna get yeah. 100 you know, goals, you know, like, we need to say goals before that. I didn't have a goal of 100, but now that I do, hey, let's do this, right? And right. Everybody- with me on uh, how people, if you just really focus on what's your goal for today, like in the midst of this coronavirus, what's your goal for today? And you laughingly say, you know, is it to take a shower? Is it to shave? But some of us are having to make simple goals like that just to make sure that we remain calm during this pandemic that we're in. Right. It's um, trying to maintain that sense of normalcy in this mm-hmm. um, in this season. Uh, mm-hmm. I think this is the people that's I, I think that's what's getting people away. You know, when you stray too far away from your normal, then right. you're really going to have a hard time. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, my sister, you know, it's a dog with a bone. Arr, she she said it and she was like, we're going to get 100 people up in here. And really, like I said, that was not the impetus at all. Right. And right. Um, but. And, and it's God's way of revealing and showing different things to me every day that, you know, yeah, setting those GAI goals are important. I see. I'm telling you, they are so important. And, and when, I, when I said, when I saw that, I was like, you know what? The emotionality of entertainment. Like, I'm, I'm like you. I've seen the other DJs who are going online and they're doing their shows. But I am wondering, what is it taking out of them emotionally to keep us uplifted? Like, to me, that's one of the major uh, initiatives that you guys have is to keep us uplifted because you're our source of like good memories. Like a lot of us associate good memories with a song. And so like, when you say thinking back on COVID 29, yeah, 2020, but it's COVID 19, is that your intent? Like to just help us emotionally cope with all of this? I can't say that it was. I wish I had put that much thought into it. Uh, <laughs> Really, it's just, you know, it's just what I love to do. And fortunately, you know, the technology has made it where we can share what we love to do with mm-hmm. everybody. Um, now, you know, I'm not going to say I don't recognize that component that everybody, you know, connects to certain things, you know, certain songs in, mm-hmm. in an emotional way. You know, of course, you recognize that. Um, 
the hard part is trying to narrow the scope. You know, um, when you get, like I said, you've got so many guys, so many guys doing so many different things. And it's, it's become right. like a channel. It's like right. TV. It's like channel surfing. And right. so, so you'll look on, you'll see a guy. Oh, okay, he's mixing. Oh, I like this song, and then you're mixing, kind of moving on. So, mm -hmm. I, my channel, and this is coming from the radio background of trying to narrow the narrow the scope down and make the songs even more impactful in a in a, in a different way. So, like uh, mm -hmm. Sunday, uh, Babyface and Teddy Riley were supposed to do a producers battle, you know, and oh, I was really okay. looking forward to that, and they postponed it. They canceled it. Oh, did they? They canceled it. Right. So uh, what I decided to do, I went, I pulled, I got this, uh, where's my book? Where is my book? Did my kids move my stuff? Oh, it's underneath my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Top R&B singles. And this is from, it tells every artist's song from what year it tells the chart positions and all this other kind of stuff. It's like my, it's like my musical Bible. I'm so, a DJ, you know. <laughs> yeah, so. I went through it and I put. I said, "Oh, I forgot Teddy Riley did that song." So I pulled all these Teddy Riley songs. Okay. Stuff okay. he produced for Heavy D. Stuff he produced for Michael Jackson. Did the same with Babyface. Where he stuff he did with Pebbles and Tevin Campbell. And I made okay. this big collage, and I had people vote. And I was like, "All right, I'm gonna play two songs: one Teddy, one Babyface." And I want you to tell me, of these two songs, who wins the the battle? And we're gonna do thirty songs. And at the end of it. We're gonna decide who's the best, and so, so uh -huh. Teddy Riley killed him. Teddy Riley crushed him. <laughs> well, because he has more dancing, right? More upbeat songs. We're, it is it, it, that when it, it's you know what it is. We a child of the bass. When you when when, okay. when that when 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 that uh <laughs> when that make it last forever and all those you know mm -hmm. drop it's it's. It's hard to listen to Sweet November, you know. <laughs> I mean, okay, so that okay, so that's what I'm thinking about. Like the music, the memories that we associate with the music, you can't get past that. No, like my son even did his senior project on that in high school. Mm -hmm. Is how memory is connected to the music that yeah. we uh, identify with. So, okay, so I like to play, a, you know, a couple of head games with people, and usually I do word association. Okay. But for you, I did some hip hop songs because even okay. though you're the, the praise and worship mix in the morning. No, hip hop I, is my soul. Is my okay, soul. that's my <laughs> Okay. So I'm going to put a uh, slide up on the screen and you tell me your first memory of that. Okay. okay uh -oh. Just your first memory when it pops up. Control, Janet Jackson. Wow. Uh, I think first crush. First crush, okay. man. That's, I think every dude who grew up in the 80s and looked at. Uh, Looked at her as Penny on Good Times, or, or when she was on, uh, or when she was on there with Philip Drummond and all them, you know. Or not oh, all. Facts of Life, Facts of Life. Facts of, uh, no, she wasn't on Facts of Life. That was Tootie. She was on. Uh, she was. Oh, on, she was on uh, different strokes. She was on different strokes. Different strokes. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, she was on. They were all the same time period, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same yeah. time period, but yeah, that was every dude's first crush right there. Jack. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here's the next one. Who freshman year Hampton University student union parties and when that dropped, dirt, 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 yes, whatever oh. without a cause. Oh yeah, yeah, the PE, love it, love it, love it, <laughs> love it. And I had a chance, to, and I had a chance to interview Chuck D actually a couple years ago. Did and you tell, really? him, and tell him how much that song, you know, was a part of my college experience? Yeah, absolutely. You should post those videos. We have time to watch them now. Yeah, I'm gonna post all that stuff. I, I got time too since I ain't got no job. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, here's the next one. Crazy, Crazy. Uh -huh. Green. I thought this song was so unique mm -hmm. when when I heard it. To hear somebody uh, you know, he's singing with such a gospel passion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about about a, such a different subject than a gospel and praise song. Uh -huh. I thought it was so unique. CeeLo is super talented. So that song was out the summer that my kids and I spent in Indianapolis. I went mm -hmm. to school up there working on my PhD. I went mm -hmm. up there for a summer and rented out an apartment. And mm -hmm. my kids went with me and my dad went with me. He was supposed to watch the kids while I was in class. That didn't happen. They actually Bad went with me. But that song will forever be, you know, like I associated you know, with it. Yeah. Like, because it, it just seems so crazy to be living in the middle of nowhere. No, it, it was just 
Like I actually packed my kids up and came to school. So that was kind of, that is, I have an affinity for that one. But see, you know, what you said is, is a trip. Um, and this is part of my DJ Kai uh, psychology. Okay, let me hear it. All right. <laughs> This is this is and this is true and, and it's it's one hundred percent fact. When guys always ask me, you know, what's the key to DJ? The number one key is song selection. Okay. Um, and that comes with number two, and they go hand in hand, knowing the audience that you're playing in front of. Mm -hmm. If you can know, if you can factor down the audience that you're playing in front of, here's how you win. You okay. pick the songs from the ages when they were age thirteen to twenty three. You I have read research on that. Uh huh. You, you you pick those songs right there, and the reason <laughs> why is because that's when most of your first happen. That's your right. first your first love, your first mm -hmm. kiss, first having sex, your first heartbreak, your first apartment, right. your first car, your first house, first time going to college, first time living alone, right. first time getting right. drunk. All of your first are associated in that window for the most part. For okay. the most part, they're they're within that window. So those are the songs you love, you love, so, love, but, love. So the other side of that, listen, because I I don't know why I get into music like this, but I knew that 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 puberty phase was the song period that we identify with the most. Like most people, whatever genre of music was out then that they enjoy, that's what they tend to enjoy dancing to later, even though it's thirty years later. And I thought that it was because, or maybe it's multiple reasons, I can you know, say that, that it was because that's when we develop our autonomy and when we do get to make decisions for ourselves. Mm. So before then, you had to listen to the music of your parents and stuff. But by the time you get to 12 and 13, like I was going to Sound Warehouse every Friday with my allowance to buy <laughs> just a full set of records and pick out what I wanted to hear versus what my mother wanted to hear so I, it's it's interesting how all of that ties in together and how we're looking at it from different perspectives i didn't even think about that but you're right that is when you are making your your first decisions on your own you're right because mm -hmm. to that point before i bought my first run dnc album it's spinners oj's temptations james cleveland <laughs> james brown you know and so it's a mighty love yeah that's what i was <laughs> well you remember the first rap song you heard oh yeah rapper's delight yeah. That was me too. And we were at a family reunion in a backyard party. Mm -hmm. And my uncle, who was a lot younger than my dad, said, you know, I'm going to play this song for you. And my dad was like, man, can't nobody understand that stuff. We ain't going to dance for that. And my uncle got out there dancing and I got to dance. And my dad, was, you know, of course he cusses. But I just remember that whole thing where you could see it in his eyes like he didn't think that we would like that. But when everybody started dancing to it, he was like, oh, this ain't that bad, you know? You know, it it was music for us. And I mm -hmm. think that's what's important for every kid. When when I see uh, guys who diss younger uh, artists, um, I remember when Soulja Boy first came out and, you know, um, everybody wanted to clown Soldier Boy. And we were about to set up and do an interview with Kumo D. And so uh -huh. when Kumo D was coming in, we're looking, we're like, oh man, cool Modi, come in here. We want you to clown Soldier Boy. What is this nonsense that he's doing? Be a champion uh -huh. of hip hop. And so and, and, and cool Modi said something so profound, it changed uh -huh. my whole perspective. He said, every generation picks their own heroes. Mm. And that changed it all. He said, one generation like Roy Rogers, the next generation like Big Bird, the next generation like Thundercats. The next generation, <laughs> like, you know, whatever, you know, yeah. there's a generation that like uh, James Brown. There's a generation that right. like, there's a generation that like the Jackson 5, one like New Edition, one, right. you know, one like Pretty Ricky, you know, or so, so, <laughs> so everyone picks their ones. And so, and then, and then how has a grown man, are you going to clown a 17 year old boy for talking about the experiences that he has? His experience right. is going to the mall, get some new tennis shoes getting a new shirt and hollering at some girls. We yeah. are, if you go back and listen to our songs, we go back and yeah. listen to our 17 year old songs, they the same, LL Cool J is doing the same thing. It just sounded different. And so, yeah, yeah, it looked better too. All right, so, okay, so here's the next one. The Rain. Ooh, man, <laughs> I, when I hear, when I think about that song, I think about the video and okay. listening with the bug guy and you uh -huh. know, uh -huh. doing all that. And then sonically, it sounded like nothing we'd ever heard before. 
Mm-mm. That's you know the double time beats and the and, and, and the crazy sound effects that Timberland puts in his beats. I think I think Timberland and Missy they ushered hip hop into a different era. Era in mm-hmm. hip hop and R and B because even Pony by Genuine you know yeah. didn't sound like any anything we'd ever heard before. That wouldn't that wasn't common. Yeah. yeah. I like that one too. Okay, so here's the last one. <laughs> a lot of us are having to deal with this one <laughs> now. <laughs> the lazy song. <laughs> uh, you said it all right there. <laughs> <laughs> you said it all. And that's why goals are important. So you can avoid And that's lazy why song. goals are important, folks, because <laughs> that song can get real deep in your soul when you don't have a schedule to maintain. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I've, I've actually now, I, I set my alarm for like 6.30, get up, I take a shower, brush my teeth, put on deodorant, put on some clothes. I may not iron the shirt, but everything else, like I'm actually going to go to work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think people are faring better with this crisis when they keep their routine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's some semblance of their routine. Maybe not the exact same, but some semblance of it. No, you or you create new ones. One of the things that we've yeah. done right now, we have a we do a family walk. We try to do it twice a day. We go okay. walk. We walk uh, twice around the neighborhood. It's about a mile and a half. Mm-hmm. So we do it once in the morning and we do it once in the evening. Okay. And, um, uh, so um, yeah, creating a, a new routine. You know, because you got to fill these gaps. Right in there now. Otherwise, you're just gonna be uh, a cereal snacker all day. Just go. Are, are you helping with the homeschooling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's hard, man. Uh-huh. It's hard. You look at all the stuff that they got to do and trying to, mm-hmm. you know, maintain a schedule for them. You know, you you don't want to sit them down at a table for five hours straight. Right. But you, but you know, you realize they got to get their work done too. So you know, right. trying to trying to balance that is uh. We still ain't find the right thing, you know. We're getting there. <laughs> we still ain't found the what really works. I know this though. We've learned they got to go to bed. They right. got to go to bed. You know. Right. The other night, my son was up playing two K with his uh, cousin in California. They're like one thirty in the morning. We're like no, all right. All right, no. All right. And luckily, you know, can hit that Xfinity, turn that wife off right here from the phone. I ain't got to get out the bed. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. That's what I said. If, if you just keep them on the schedule, they don't have to get up at eight o'clock in the morning, but they do need to have time that they get up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all right. So I appreciate you joining me. I am. Um, I'm looking forward to the audience seeing this and joining you on your morning <laughs> praise and worship set. And then Thank I'm you. telling people how they can find you, but you give it out too, because some of these may be different. Like I found your website. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, classicjoints.com uh, uh, dot net rather is. A- uh, it's the app you can actually download, Classic Joints. So it's all hip hop um, app. So uh, okay. we got that up there, and all the music on there is clean. We play all clean music on there, okay. so you can play it around the kids. So if you want to get your classic hip hop on, you can do that. Uh, yeah, at Rob Cheetah General on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, it's the same. It's the same on all of them. I believe in keeping it consistent. Keeping it consistent. <laughs> keeping it across, consistent. across the board, because you know it'd be Rob Cheetah General one over here at at the Rob G, the real one, you know, it's too much. Keep it well, consistent across the board. People steal your stuff. I mean, yeah. you yeah. know, if yeah. you don't grab it once you start setting up everything, they'll steal it and then try to sell it back to you. <laughs> right, right. It's right. just That's interesting. Yeah. Part right there. Are you still doing your podcast? You know, I have I because of work, I slowed down. It's and, and okay. that's uh at the cut curators where I uh interview classic hip hop artists like Dougie Fresh. Uh, okay. Uh, I've had Dougie Fresh on there. I've Teddy Riley, uh, okay. Teddy Riley on there. Um, uh, Big Daddy Kane, uh, Red Run, uh, DMC. So yeah, all your your, your favorites on there. It's, uh, the Cut Curator podcast, and that's on iTunes, Spotify, and the whole nine. But I've got, uh, matter of fact, speaking of genuine, I've got a genuine interview that I'm gonna go ahead and start editing up right now. And I got one with uh, the guys from UTFO. So I'm going to start editing it because, I, like I said, I got free time now. All the stuff I kind of put off, I go ahead and get in there and start doing stuff for me. Just for me. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. 
And that's, I mean, we need to be mindful of these DJs out here because we still need them. So I appreciate you coming on this special edition of Goals Don't Have Feelings with Dr. Stacey Alexander, where we're highlighting the emotionality of entertainment for your segment. segment. Because the DJs you, are here with this good music, but you have lives too that you're trying to maintain and keep consistent. So I appreciate you taking time out this morning. Yeah, trying to trying to do that, and uh, you know, and, and we'll see what the balance has got to be. Is I know I just can't come up here and lock myself up in the room all day. I got to go down there, like I said, help them with the study and right. the floor too, right. do some dishes and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh -huh. Make sure everybody else. I it's gotta, called family. Yes, it's called it's called temperature setting. Got to set the temperature ah. on everybody. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. If, if, you right. don't like, if you don't like where the temperature is on somebody, the goal of the man in the house is to set it where it needs to be. So if somebody's too hot. Somebody too cold, you know, you got to come in there, you got to adjust everybody. So, do what you know, you're supposed to do. Do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> well, there you have it. Make sure you join Rob G, the general, on his Facebook page. He's actually started another group. So, make sure you join him on that group where he hosts a morning praise and worship edition, a mix that you don't want to miss. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. I just kind of roll over now that my schedule is off. Roll over, turn it on while I get ready for my day because I'm keeping some semblance of a schedule. If you will help us by sharing this interview on your social media platforms, I'd appreciate it greatly. And if you need to follow me on any other platform, you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter, and YouTube the episodes will air and I'll be forever grateful for you supporting Goals Don't Have Feelings with Dr. Stacey Alexander because my overall goal is to propel a, a platform that removes the stigma of mental health. If we all talk about it, we're all involved and nobody feels ashamed about actually talking about when they're feeling sad, when they have anxiety, when they're struggling with something just as much as when they share their happy times. So thank you again, Raji. I appreciate it. Bring Preach, it back. I, 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 just follow, I just follow just put you back right now on, on, on the thing. I just follow you on, <laughs> on, on, on the ground. Just follow you on the I ground. I appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. you. Thank you. Thank Take you care of your family. Right. You too. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Uh-huh.